Hello everyone and welcome to the show. It's local chat. I'm sorry. Uh Ian, oh no! Well, my my host is Will Crosby, name, and joining me this week, as always, is Ian Gibson. I'm sorry for making a joke during the pre-stream. My apologies. Jesus Christ! I can't even say half those words on air. Uh, also, living on air, as most of us do, Chris is here. That's right, I'm an uh, airitarian. Those people in Brooklyn that said they could live off air alone. That's me, and I'm still That's alive. That's you. You love air. You're uh, an air monger. Eth I'm getting a Skull and Bones ad currently for uh, twitch.tv slash subpixel team. Oh, we're giving you a Skull and Bones ad? You enjoy that ad. The hit ad. video game. The hit video Sorry, game. Yellow. The best video game that's ever been released. Um, folks, we are here to talk about said video games. We are here to talk about all sorts of wonderful things. But before we get to the video games, we got to talk about our little chit chat section here. And I've got just the thing to talk about. Ian Gibson, would you click Hi. and read the image uh, titled I'd Do Anything for Jesus? This is uh, I'd Do Anything from Jesus from PBS. From PBS. And it says... Quora, questionnaire, atheists, imagine you're going sky, you're going sky time. Sorry, I, I don't even think this is funny. I just know it's going to be funny, so I'm struggling here. <laughs> atheists, imagine you're going skydiving with a Christian baby. Suddenly, the baby tells you he won't open his parachute until you renounce atheism and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. What would you do? Wow, it's a would you rather for the would you rather master. <laughs> uh, I mean, mine like mine's kind of a boring answer. I'm gonna go first or last. I, I mean, I, we probably have the same answer. Fuck this kid. Oh, that is not my answer. You're gonna. That's a crime. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Buddy, do you know how easy it is to, quote, renounce atheism and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? <laughs> you just have to say it. You don't have to mean it. You just have to say it. And then the baby lives and you get back on the ground. And you go, so I, tough I, titty, I, little bitty. I, I can't I can lie to the kid. I can just say whatever. I mean, you could tell him that you have. How else is he supposed to know? You I mean, know? I was you just going to freak out that this baby's talking in full sentences with the concept yeah, that, of Jesus. That, and you know what, Will, that leads to my point of, no, actually still Our fuck kid. the kid. Because, <laughs> um, first of all, if he's willing to do this as a baby, imagine the kind of fucking religious terrorist acts this oh, kid's going to get up to later in life. And also, also, yeah, it's clearly like a monster or something. It's talking in full sentences. You, you could just grab yeah. the baby and pull your parachute. <laughs> No, sorry, I don't mean That's to tangent parent. this, but you, you bring up a good point, which is they're probably going to be a terrible Christian adult. Yeah. And then in my head, I immediately went to what's the worst Christian adult? And then I thought of like Christian terrorists, oh. like Christian terrorists that bomb abortion clinics. And then I yeah. immediately thought. Honestly, that's kind of a weak ass terrorist. Like there are much better terrorists in the world. And the best Christian <laughs> terrorists can do is like uh, like protests and like pointless bombings of abortion clinic entrances yeah. overnight like get fucking better at your terrorism you probably like don't even believe shooting in up a different church because they're the wrong kind of christian like it's exactly like, it's just like exactly shit like that yeah yeah it's like get better at your job you know yeah. cause better, better terror in this world oh uh, yeah i would just grab the baby and pull my chute uh be the terror you want to see in the world do they make baby parachutes Yes, I'm gonna for, say yes. For sale, <laughs> baby parachute. <laughs> baby parachute not used, <laughs> never used. <laughs> used but never opened. <laughs> no, that's 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 eight words. Uh, Got to be six words. Oh, whatever. Is that a baby? Or for like? sale, for sale, <laughs> baby parachute, tiny splat. <laughs> <gasps> I just realized I said instead of baby shoes, I wrote said baby dick, which we if all glazed if over. To go, if you're willing to go one more wordy and surprisingly big splat, it's very surprisingly surprisingly. big splat, surprisingly Juicy. easy to masturbate to. Um, wow! Jesus Can we? Let's we gotta move on. Right. We're, we're off the rails. We're, we're off, off the rails, rails folks. Uh, right. If you're still here, um, does do we want to talk about pinky sucking? <laughs> I mean, I got I got two bits on my thing too. So, oh Jesus! I'm gonna mention this two quick would you because rather's? it's genuinely very. Fun. 
<laughs> yeah, do what you want. Which is um, Karen always like cooks all the time, makes delicious sauces and stuff. Sometimes she brings sure. things on a fork or a spoon, but when she makes sauces, she'll like dip her finger in it and like like run out to the couch and have me taste it and i just in my head i'm like i don't like this in my like i don't want to lick someone else's fingers outside of contexts i guess uh like outside anything's fair game in the context. moment but so then when i was cooking the other day i dipped my pink in the sauce and brought it to her and she goes she like licks it and she goes i don't like doing that <laughs> Too fucking bad, because we got to catch up until we're even here. <laughs> and Table I lost turned, it, Karen. and I was like, I can't believe you said that because I hate it every time you. I'm always like, oh, bring it to me on the spoon, please. Oh boy. <laughs> so you guys should oh get, um, you guys should get like one of those like syringes that are uh, like for like like a turkey you know, baster. Like, no, oh, that could work too. I was thinking like oh, those like gastronomy a syringes that like pretentious restaurants do or whatever the fuck. Yeah, and then just like oh. spray it in each other's mouths at distance though. Get further back super until soaker. you can't anymore. <laughs> oh, a super soaker's good. That's a that's yeah. a lot of sauce. But just like just, well, just like a two shot. Like, how long would it take you to fill a super soaker, Ian? <laughs> What? Depends on the size. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I don't want to go down this line because how long? Ian? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't want to know. What's your volume? You take zinc. You take zinc. <laughs> no, moving on. Moving, moving on. on. Uh, Ian or Chris, sorry, you had some would you rather's for us? Yeah, I got some would you rather for you. <laughs> this first one's called horse. Uh, how long would it take you to kill a horse? Uh, here's the scenario. You're both trapped in a stable. You have access to the stable doors. I don't know if they have a proper name, but like the individual stall doors. <clears throat> Three horseshoes. A pile of oats or whatever the fuck horses eat. And one saddle. How long to kill the horse? I, I, I have a very clear answer. Yeah. You could not kill the horse. You don't think so? No. I, Let me I tell you why I've gotten I've gotten a lot of a lot of answers a pretty high amount of people say they couldn't kill a horse. Let me so let me tell you I used to live behind a horse farm and my sister would volunteer at the horse farm a lot. We were friends with the horse people and we would help them out sometimes. And one time I remember um, the guy who owned the horse farm was giving one of the um, one of the horses like a bath like like washing them off outside and the horse was like goofing off and wasn't like paying attention and he like grabs the horse by the rein, pulls the head down, punches it full force in the mouth. And the horse is just like, yeah, I don't give a shit. And just kept doing nothing like that. Ho horses are big. They're strong. They are giant fucking animals. They don't give a shit when you do things to them. That's why spurs have like sharp instruments in them, for, especially for untamed horses, because you got to do a lot to get a horse's attention. You can't you can't kill a horse in that situation. You don't, you, think, you don't have you don't the, the horse shoes like repeatedly bashing over the head. No, because the horse would fuck you up. Yeah. Horse yeah. would fuck you up. Dunzo. A decent amount of people said the horse would kill me. Like, or yeah. them, whatever. Uh, yeah. Will, kill a horse? I'm, uh, no? I hate horses, and I am also terrified of horses. Uh, so I would kill myself. Okay. It's the only, it's the only way <laughs> to be answer. sure. Um, it's a good answer. Thank you. The other good one answer, is, uh, assuming the world population to be roughly 8 billion people, like it currently is, uh, how many people do you think in the world you can beat in a fight? Fuck, that's a good one. Didn't we? Did we do this one in person, Chris? Oh, we might have. I think you've done this one with me. Okay, well, I'll do my answer because I think I remember my answer, which is I think yeah, I'm. Talk, talk us I think uh, you said 8 billion. I mean, you know, what it, I think what I could kill currently. about four billion people because mm -hmm. I think I'm about average, like human strength, size, intelligence. And mm -hmm. I think if I'm average, that means I'm right in the middle of the pack. That's like a ton of babies <clears throat> I can easily kill. It's a ton of yeah. elderly people I can kill. And that's a ton of like kids under probably like 12. I could probably manage to drown or something. I see. I, I kind of see where you're coming from, but I I would go a little bit lower. This is very bad math. 
but I'm thinking. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, billion, hard. it's supposed to be, you know, generalized. Yeah, let's 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 make it real stupid. Eight billion people. Uh-huh. Let's say it's a billion per decade. So there's a billion zero to ten, a billion eleven to twelve, et cetera. And we'll go good. up to like seventy nine. I would say I could probably beat the seventies. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe half of the sixties and the zero to ten and the ten to twenty. And that right there is what two and a half to three billion people. Yeah. yeah. I can't I also, be twenty I can't be I can't be twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, definitely not. But also Too many a, people. Uh, but think about the obese are, people. Yeah, there, there are a 30s. lot of people Tommy. in each bracket you'll get. I I, well, I remember Googling something for this, and it was like I couldn't find a hard number. But there's like roughly a billion people who are very sick at any point, and that doesn't include like like that like that, yeah. that's not like just hospitals, like cancer. Yeah, yeah, that's like and that like that that adds in with like old people you can easily beat up, babies and shit. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> well, when and, does like, life you know, start? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not, you know. is, is this a would you rather? <laughs> would, you, would you would you would you rather live in a state where never mind? Check um, me atheist. And like you know, it's fuck to say, Will, but you made a good point. I can beat up a lot of pregnant people. <laughs> Does that count That's as two? Not what... <laughs> Does that count as two? <laughs> you just you, you throw the last punch, double kill. Oh no! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> it, uh, it, it only counts as two oh, in boy. certain states. Ian. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah i think i think it's a higher like i i think saying anything below a billion is fucking insane oh yeah yeah saying anything yeah. below two billion is probably dumb uh i i think the sweet spot for most people is going to be between three to four billion yeah yeah i can see that but also i think it's like it, it also goes like if you put like a like ufc fighter in there it's like 7.9 billion like they can oh, beat yeah. up like almost everyone <laughs> Hundred percent, hundred percent. I've seen Roadhouse. I know how it goes. That's... Are you in the, Are you in that remake? Uh, can I just say real quick? I watched Roadhouse for the first time a couple months ago. It's fucking incredible. Yeah. It is a very it's like a good perfect movie. like. A, I don't even know what to call it. Eighties. I know. Uh, it's like bouncer like... romance. <laughs> It's like parts Romance? of it are dumb, but but parts Balance. of it are also really well shot and acted and choreographed. The cinematography so it's just of that like... movie has no business being as good as it was. Exactly. We, we, we were so at Will's good. and he had one of his random bullshit movies on the TV and we kept being like, this looks way better than it has any right to. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I put an Italian. Uh, it was essentially robot instead of predator. Uh, and it was an Italian movie, but I mean, they spoke English uh, and yeah. it was... It was wildly bad, but also pretty good at the same time. Like yeah. every time the robot was on screen, terrible, ugly dog shit. When it was just like the people, I was like, oh wow, this is like actually good. Yeah. It's I spent about I mean, 20 minutes crossing a river. That this is gonna sound <laughs> This is gonna sound like like obvious and also targeted, but genuinely the mcu has lowered standards for cinema and it's like you go back in time yeah. enough to get before mcu you're like holy shit this is competent and not just generic in front of a green screen holy shit hey 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 it's a blue screen oh i, I apologize sorry green screens didn't mean to offend it's okay it's the green volume are for please. twitch streamers and e-girls motherfucker i'm an e-girl this is yeah. all ai baby <laughs> <laughs> um Thank you, Chris, for bringing your would you rathers. We always, always enjoy have, them. Yeah. Uh, you can just go ahead and log off the call and we'll continue with the show. Uh, folks, moving on to the game section. I, this week, me, Chris, did, that was funny. That's a good, uh, Ian's left the call now. This is so funny because <laughs> nobody Ian, can Ian. hear it and nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Ian thought the stream was actually oh, over because when streams end on Subpixel, Ian's gone before <laughs> Will has said, but. Fuck it, man. He does. I noticed o'clock. every it's time I stream, every time I stream with save data people, which is not a bad thing, so don't take it as a bad thing. The show finishes it's and it's like 15 minutes of just chatting. Because uh, I forget yeah. you guys end your streams and stay up versus we just end them and, uh, and trim them. But that happened. That happened to us once. And like five minutes into it, I was like, I hate this and I want to drop, but it's too late. So that's why I'm like, bye. <laughs> Give me I out like, of here. It's bedtime. I like other people, but Ian doesn't. Uh, hey, I went to bed at nine o'clock last night, and let me tell you, it's fucking great. That's yeah, too early. Yeah, but that's like it, when, so every early. once in a while, as a little treat for yourself, it's a banger. As a little yeah, treat. Yeah, also, when you, that's not a when treat. You drink, when you drink a little bit too much too fast at like 7 p.m., 
9 p.m. is way too late. At that point, you're like, good night. Good night. Happy Wings Day. <laughs> Happy Wings Day. Um, speaking of wings, I have defeated Ninja Gaiden for uh, the, the 2004 <laughs> Ninja Gaiden Sigma. We all we talked about this all last week. Uh, I've defeated it. It was awesome. Uh, that game suffers a lot of uh, things. Uh, like being a game from 2004 but outside yeah, of hurt. that I would say the bosses are pretty hard that boss I was stuck on last week is probably the hardest I fought in the game um, the ending I actually made through so there's two a boss with two phases and then the final boss and I got through the boss with two phases but the final boss I couldn't beat so I actually loaded before the boss with the two phases ran all the way to the shop in <sighs> town bought everything and then made my way back through uh, and beat the game. Uh, fantastic game. It did a really cool thing where like everything, the like levels all connect back to each other. And so you're just expanding the city more and more as you're, as you're going through it, which is really fun and neat. And then, uh, oh, what I was going to say is uh, other than the bosses being hard, the like hardest part about the bosses is getting back to the bosses. Yeah. Uh, because the save is far away. <laughs> um and it's really dumb, and I hate it. Um, I remember I, I played that game a millennium ago, um, and I remember you know it being a, a time and having a good time playing it. I remember nothing about what you said about the city, the two, the double boss, any of that shit, except for the fucking boss runs being long as shit. Vivid memory of that. Oh, it, oh, it's the worst. Uh, so I have now moved on to Ninja Gaiden Two Sigma, or Sigma Two, mm. however they want to say it. Um, it is the 2008 uh, game that came out on the 360 and then was remastered for or remade for the changed for the PlayStation 3. Uh, the version I'm playing is less graphic, so they replaced all the geysers of blood coming out of the enemies with like purple ether coming out. Ugh. Um, I, I was actually looking it up. This game was like a huge hot button like is this game too violent have g games gone too yeah, far yeah i remember i remember like all like the you know um, it was gonna, like, say california was gonna ban it or something like that yeah so i'm kind of bummed i'm missing out on that stuff but from what i read online that's the only positive of going back to the play regular ninja guide into uh other than that sigma improved a lot of things it it uh someone uh put it well which is like it does about eight steps forward and four steps back and but not mm -hmm. on all the same things so like it ruined some things but made a lot of things a lot better uh so i'm enjoying that it is way 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 easier than the first game uh like it's kind of laughable i thought about upping the difficulty because i just started on normal um but it is uh, there's one boss who I like I didn't die until like the fourth level and then there was one boss who was two you had to fight two bosses at the same time and that was just giving Ugh. me a challenge because uh like I'm a when I fight bosses even in Dark Souls and everything like I'm I'm not the type of person who's like I'm like using every drop of health potion and like taking hits to get hits on things like I'm not good at dodging and all that sort of stuff and with two fighting two people it's very difficult to do so I'm enjoying that. It's supposed to be a much shorter game. The how long to beat average is 11 hours, and I think I'm four or five into it now. I spent 18 hours in the original, uh, which makes Oof. a heck of a lot of sense. Uh, and then uh, it, it's it's nice too because the the menus, the like settings menu, has your like total gameplay time, mm -hmm. which is cool to see. Uh, so it's like separate from your saves. Uh, and then uh, I think I'm going to check out Ninja Gaiden 3 after 2, only because how long to beat listed it as being five hours long. And that seems crazy to me. <laughs> so uh, oof. I might check that out. And, and then I, I might actually go check out the NES games uh, after that. And just I think I think they're on the Switch uh, NES. And if not, they're on my definitely on my Steam Deck. Uh, you got a copy yeah you got a copy yeah yeah i bought a couple copies so definitely can do that uh and I mean, then the, um the, the price for the rights of ninja garden is probably like three ham sandwiches and <laughs> whatever is currently rolling around in the back of your jeans that's true it, it does make me want to play more team ninja stuff um and like you should kind play, of start um, going through it whoa long final uh final dino let's see what the fuck is that game called well long the, the soul's like whoa long yeah um, I, I, it's pretty good 
I remember playing the demo for it when that was all, all in- or people were hot and bothered about it. Yeah. Uh, so I need to check that. Wo Long, yeah, it's something dynasty. It's got a horny Fallen, uh, character. Fallen right? Dynasty. Fallen Dynasty. Ah, we're dancing I, around it. Yeah, we're dancing, tickling it. Um, so yeah, those are fun games. They're nice to just kind of veg out on the couch and play. And I have no idea what is happening in the story. This game has vampires and werewolves in it. Uh, oh, also the level design in, in two sucks and I hate it. It's like different zones. I mean, it started in Tokyo and then it went to New York. And now for some reason they can't say Venice. So we're in Venice, uh, but they just called it the Aqua City. Um, it's just like really weird because they named the Tokyo city of Venice and New York. Get real pissed. You think <laughs> like, Venice is like trademarked? Like they yeah. trademarked themselves? Yeah, probably. So I was really confused. Also, the it's Venice. Oh, sorry, it's Venice with a Colosseum and a giant Dark Souls castle. It looks like a yeah. castle stolen from Dark Souls and put there. And I even went down a rabbit hole yeah, to see like if. Venice if the art designer from this game worked on a dark souls game, because it, it looks exactly like a dark souls game. And I'm like, but so far I couldn't turn, turn anything up on it. Uh, but yeah, all the levels, it doesn't do the cool thing. The first one does where they all interconnect and like feel satisfying. You're like, Oh, I came out of that door. Uh, it's just bad and not fun. And, uh, yeah, like I said, eight steps forward, four steps back. Uh, Mm -hmm. it's not too bad. Uh, and that's all I've been playing. I'll, I'll save uh, the other game I've been playing for when Ian talks about it. But let's let's skip over Ian like a nice little hop. And Chris, why don't you tell me about the lovely games you've been playing? So I didn't. Hey, folks, uh, there's a doc that they that they make for every single one of these. I did not put the first game on my list on my list of games that I've been playing. Uh, one of these fuckers did, presumably a Will Crosby. Uh, <laughs> they wrote RuneScape beneath and, my thing and am i current playing it on my left monitor yeah I of course knew i am i'm running agility laps as a monkey on apatol so that my monkey backpack will turn into different monkeys for cosmetic purposes shut up uh what do you, what do you want for me runescape's a great game they're about to release a new continent and sailing is coming out later this year jesus christ i actually have really really wanted to so this okay so Super quick ended. I was like just on YouTube randomly months ago and I hit the home button you took it to the home of YouTube. You're familiar. Um, and on my recommended feed, it was a video titled Minesweeper Full Let's Play. Whole title. It was a <laughs> 12 hour video. And I thought about it. So I, I wish I clicked on it. I mean, I can go find it easily. Um, but uh, I was like, I just like, I love the idea of uploading a video very simply titled like video game full let's play. And then it is an absurd length of time. <laughs> so I thought about like recording a very long thing. I, I have a novelty account on RuneScape. That's a, a no currencies account. Like you can't have any money. You can't use any money or any like points or anything like that. Um, I thought about recording an absolute shitload of content on that, and then cutting it down, and making it as yeah, <laughs> and releasing like a like a fifty hour video. <laughs> and just like, Runescape, let's play part one. <laughs> you know, as, never as much as I hate, as much as I hate turning this into a Runescape podcast, we we played Runescape in Server Quest, right? At some point, will did you guys ever make it that far? Two thousand and seven. I think we, we play I something think we play else. Oh, you, you might have played the the safe version of the mud. Um, no, like RuneScape one. Which would well, now that I'm looking at pictures, three. now I'm looking at pictures of RuneScape. I don't think we played this. So, RuneScape's also gone on underneath a lot of like changes over the years. Like, there's, so there's modern RuneScape, which is RuneScape three. Sorry. There's old school RuneScape, which looks older, and then old school RuneScape also is being turned HD. I think this year maybe yeah. next and um it's gonna look better than wow and i'm not hyperbolizing that i i uh, i'm uh sorry i don't mean to uh, yeah because hey, i y'all have I, i'm Space willing to give the other channel i was about to say i'm willing to give runescape a shot if we it, have not played it before it's RuneScape's a brilliant great. game it is genuinely it's great. a great game for doing on your second monitor and like doing something else like you can play other games and like do afk shit and when you want to pay attention and actively play the game fuck loads of content that you've been putting off while you've been afk training yeah gotcha sorry we have a list i'm just trying to see 
It may have been Ultima Online that I'm thinking about. Are those, are those videos not on YouTube? Just check. Yeah, I'm looking right now. I think Fantasy, that's what that's what Will's checking. Final Fantasy 14. Uh, I put in here. EverQuest. I thought y'all were going in. Oh, we order. did play RuneScape. Oh god, I'm that? so young. I hate this. I hate. I hate this already. I think I. We should do another. RuneScape. We should do another RuneScape. We should do another RuneScape. We should do a series. We should do a full You're playthrough. Having to sit there with a so, headset. And like I can, we, well, we can hear your song. Yeah, we can hear that. I know. Um, is Ian it. talking about, is Ian not talking about the stream that's currently going on, which is classic. classic. Yeah. So I, I, I will say for particularly for like a sub pixel series or whatever, they added a, a thing a, two years ago, a year ago called group Iron Man. Iron Man is a, a game. Mode, it's in a lot of MMOs, but RuneScape made it like an official one where it's like you can't trade with other players. You have to like make everything mm -hmm. yourself, final it yourself. And so group Iron Man is a game permitted thing that like uh, lets you do that with a small group of friends. So you guys can all share resources with each other, but you can't yeah. like, with anyone else. It's a great little like mini game, but Iron Man is a brilliant way to play any MMO. I mean, it works in a lot of people playing in, you know, WoW and Final Fantasy and shit like that. Listen, yeah. I would play RuneScape. 100%. Let's you go. You can jerk off while you play. Actually, oh sorry. God. I just, now that I think about it, we have another series in our idea list that RuneScape would fall into as a perfect episode. Great. You know what? I'll, running. I'll spoil it. So basically, the idea of the series is somebody comes on and they bring like their darling game it's like hey this is the game i can't stop playing this is the game i think about all the time from my childhood it's not super popular it's not mainstream but like and if you came on you would bring runescape if i came on i would probably bring like ace of spades or something like that i mean know? not not to you know jerk the game off anymore uh, but like i wouldn't I don't, I don't know if i would call runescape not mainstream as far as mmos go it is the most played mmo yeah but i i think for for the for gamer gamers oh gamers it, uh, it, a lot general. of people roll their eyes at it because it looks like it's from 2007 because yeah. it is yeah so it's actually, one of those where it's like kind of the same way me, people roll their eyes at dwarf fortress actually yeah it's like let me show you no, this little to. gem yeah, you know no. doesn't have to be undiscovered or whatever it's just like i want to show you and talk to you for an hour about why i love this little thing so yeah, much i think that's great there uh a, a youtuber i used to follow started doing something like that right before they quit youtube and it was called why i love the thing and they would just basically talk about what they love yeah. about the thing. And then they quit YouTube. So Yeah. yeah. I quit YouTube as well. <clears throat> <laughs> YouTube quit you, buddy. Hell yeah. Um, um, right. I can, I can breeze through the other one. Uh, okay. Yakuza 8. Yakuza Like a Dragon or uh, Like a Dragon 8 Infinite Wealth. Uh, this franchise has hit its stride super well since Zero. We, everyone's aware of this. Um, they refined basically all the problems with the turn-based system from seven, mainly like the positioning stuff and like some stuff just being unclear and a little confusing, which is, you know, to be expected. Um, uh, game game's great story is like that perfect level of baffling. And oh my God, I can't believe they did that. What do you mean that guy lived through that explosion? Shut up. <laughs> um, what do you mean? He fell off a 30 story building. What do you mean? He's fine. He got <laughs> shot clearly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no orphanages have burned down yet, unfortunately. Damn. Um, but, you know, hope and third act orphanage burned down. Can always happen, baby. Uh, yep. Game's great. I also uh, didn't put on here, but Elden Ring, I, I got back into Elden Ring. You talking about Gaiden, if you think about it. Um, game's still very good. Uh, I've started doing, like, some, like, kind of novelty playthroughs on that, um, like Bow Only, for example. It's just, you know, fun. Except for Shadow of the Earth Tree, after recent uh, news, might not be getting that anytime soon. <laughs> Sad, yeah. but I mean, I was just thinking, like they they pump those games out. They're not taking so this six is, seven years between them. So that means this is probably going to be pretty fucking big if this is where they're putting all their effort. I actually, I actually think it, it's kind of like a weirder thing because like uh, the gap between Demon Souls and Dark Souls was weird because like a company switch um, or yeah. like a funding switch. Uh, Dark Souls one and two was a small ish gap, but also me like he didn't direct it uh two and three was a very substantial gap but if you count bloodborne it's less so um yeah but then three to Elden ring was like a middle-ish gap wait wait wait. but sekiro oh i always forgot about sekiro so, yes, so that's my point and is Dark Souls like, 3 dlc normally, as well yeah they yes. normally come these out pretty quickly and so i think all twos, i think yeah, them spending time yeah. means they're putting a lot of effort and this is going to be a big dlc yeah, that's a good point 
Yeah. Also, I don't know if you saw to, literally today. FromSoft now owns Elden Ring. No longer, no longer Bandai, yes. Bandai Namco. Namco Bandai. Yep. How they switch? One of them. One of them. <clears throat> um, I don't yeah. know. I, you know, you're making me now. I kind of, I, I've been thinking about Elden Ring lately, and I still think it's too soon for me to replay through that game. If you do want to replay, do what I wish I did: install the Carrion Strikers mod or Carrion Combo mod, or whatever. It just turns everyone's Tank move mod. sets into rad. <laughs> like it just adds like unnecessary backflips and like co- like sw- big sweet kicks and stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. I want that desperately. Honestly, after, after playing Ninja Gaiden. You'd be a lot closer. I flip all the time in Ninja Gaiden. You can also uh, wait for that uh, new near knockoff, the one that's got the boobies and the butts. Oh, the Blade Solar Sonya Blade. Sonya Sol- Blade. Solar Blade. Solar Blade. Solar Blade. Blade. Yeah. She does have boobies. Um, oh, yeah. Booby Tech in Ninja Gaiden 2. Not as great as Ninja Gaiden 1, but Shame. everyone is Gaiden way Booby more naked. <laughs> so Sweet. <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, Ryu? Ryo? Yeah. Ryu, uh, Ryu, yeah. Ryu, yeah, Ryu. And, and Joe Hayabusa. <laughs> yeah. Well, so it can't be it can't be the other one. It can't be Ryo Hayabusa because that's who he's named after, and it's a wrestler who's very litigious. I was thinking Ryo from well, because they say it's spelled the same in Shenmue, but they a lot of people say it Ryo in the game. So yeah, it's weird. Yeah, but Shenmue I, sucks. Just play Shenmue after this. Shenmue does not <sighs> suck. You're a liar and a- yeah, I'm, you know they were talking about this on I think on on the bombcast. Yakuza is is basically just modern Shenmue, so you should just play Yakuza. Okay, or play sure, Sh- but Shenmue. When, when did Shenmue one come out? When did Yakuza one come out? It can't be that far apart. No, no, it's not that far apart. But if you want the idea of I'm going to run around a neighborhood, I'm going to learn the neighborhood, I'm going to talk oh, to people, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be able to do a bunch of stuff. Play Yakuza. Well, there, play there's Shenmue. a lot of games that offer that. It's just like what variety do you want? Do you want more anime? Go play Persona. Do you want Honolulu, go play Yakuza 8. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Um, speaking of Yakuza 8, Ian, you're no longer playing Yakuza 8? You know, I realized I haven't played any in the last week. Um, I'm, I'm slow rolling it. I think I'm about 10 or 11 hours in. Um, about so I, I there, baby. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm just taking my time with it. Um, the problem is there's two other games that took up some time from me this week. Actually, no. You know what? Fuck video games, folks. Do no. you guys know about Brandon Sanderson? The, oh no, the novelist. The novelist. Yes. Yeah, he's right. He got I'm not going to go books. on a tangent here, but yeah, he's the guy who he writes fantasy novels. He writes them very quickly, and people. Uh, there was always kind of this negative cloud around him where it's just like, yeah, he's not a good author, but he writes so quickly that his fans love him because he's always putting out new books. And then he did a Kickstarter in the middle of COVID where he's like, Hey, um, I wrote five books in the last like two years. Uh, I'm putting up a Kickstarter cause I want to self publish and not go through my publisher. And he raised like $50 million <laughs> and that blew him into the mainstream. And then I think it was wired that did like a hit piece on him. I don't know if you guys saw this, but basically this wired, sounds familiar. it was a fucking wild article. Wired was literally just like, who is this author that made $50 million on Kickstarter? And they sent out a journalist to go spend a couple days with them and do like, a, like a personality piece. Right. The whole thing was written as a fucking hit piece where literally the article was just like, why is this shitty author so popular? And they're like, they're like, he's so boring. He's just a normal ass white guy. Like, listen to his writing. It's terrible. And like everybody universally like was just like, this is a terrible fucking article. Why would you go after somebody yeah. like that who is not doing anything wrong? Why would you, you why know? would you come to my house just to boo me? Exactly. Like, yeah. This was... Mr. Rogers guy, he's just a kind guy. What a piece what of a shit. What a fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah. Where's the so great, I'm... eh? Where's the, where's yeah. the fucking Litzma? So that article made me be like, I should probably give this guy a shot. That and I, I, I'm slow. I'm on the fringes of book talk on TikTok, which is people who just read all the time. And they're, Vicks, and a Vicks couple huge in the book talk. Yeah. And, and some of them and some of them were just like, hey, here's how to get started into the Stormlight Archive. And I'm like, what's that? And they're like, it's the Brandon That's Sanderson the Brandon, yeah. series. And then I, it's, Am- it's got too many books. No, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Amazon had a deal. When was this? Will like four or five months ago, because I think he bought it. too. Yeah, right? I bought it, too. The second time. It came, I think it was November. 
Yeah, I think it's I think it's it's either the Stormlight Archive or the Way of Kings series. It's the first three books, and it was like twenty bucks. And each of the books is like a thousand page paperback. And so right around <laughs> Extra Life, right around Extra Life, which was in November, I was like, okay, let me finally start this book. And folks, turns out he's a great fucking writer. <laughs> and I'm not even into fantasy novels. So I read the first one, took a break, read three other books. I'm almost done with the second one. So this entire week. I've just been like reading when I get free time because I'm trying to get done with this book because it's it's shit's popping off. So honestly, I haven't had much time for Yakuza because I've just been reading and playing one other video game that I'll talk about. And I'm just here to say, Hold I on, think I'm turning in. You got two video games on your list. I want to hear about both of them. <laughs> I think I'm just becoming a Brandon Sanderson fan, whatever oh, the fuck no. that name is. They, I don't know what they, that fandom uh, they call name them, is. They call them Fandersons. Fandersons? Fandersons? That's not bad. That's, not, That's not bad. They're Fandom they Fandersons. Yeah, it's great. Anyways, Dark uh, <laughs> uh, sorry for the tangent. I just wanted to say, throw my voice in the ring. Brandon Sanderson deserves the money. He deserves the fame. You should totally at least read one of his books. You'll probably it's, enjoy it. Um, not to continue belabor this uh, tangent, but I had recently seen, That's I think belabor. when that happened, there was an article uh, or on Reddit or something. It was a discussion of like, I don't get Brandon Sanderson, like blah, 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 blah. But the thing I found interesting is yeah. someone in the comments was like, yeah, essentially everything you said, it's not like the most amazing writer in the world. He's a great writer and he turns books out quickly. <laughs> and the guy was just like, but I love his stories. And I always remember where like the people in his world and where I am in those stories. Yeah. And I, I equated that to I'm on the, I've been on the fourth book of the wheel of time series since three years yeah. ago when I put I it down say, halfway through since it. 1982. I know exactly where I am in that book. I know exactly what yeah. characters are going to do stuff back at the, at the lady place. And I know exactly what the guy's doing, uh, with Calador and all that sort of stuff. And it's just like wild yeah. that I can just, I could pick up that. So I know exactly what you're talking about where it's just like that kind of. I, yeah. Good. I will fantasy. say. I, I mean, my, my college degree is in English lit. I like to think I can identify a good writer and a bad writer, et cetera. And he, he's a very good writer for, for, for two reasons. Number one, he knows how to write. Well, he's not writing at like a Nobel prize level, but it's very enjoyable. It moves. Everything's mm -hmm. coming out right. You know, it. even though it's a thousand pages, it doesn't feel like it bogs down anywhere, etc. He's weaving all the elements of storytelling together. And number two, he's telling a great fucking story with great characters. And he knows how to move it along and keep it moving and build up a little bit over here, a little bit up over here, build to the plot points, etc. And I'll tell you this. I have read up to i've read all that's available of the king killer chronicles by patrick rothfuss and he's very good at characters he's terrible at telling a fucking story because his his series is just fucking meandering it's yeah. like oh i'm gonna do 200 pages over here and then it's gonna go over here and there's no sense of like plotting basically whereas like brandon sanderson is just like very good writer very good storyteller and it's just like again i don't like fantasy but the other thing is he's building a world that feels distinct and a lot of sci-fi and a lot of fantasy is just the same fucking cliches over and over yeah. again. And it feels like he actually has something distinct here. So anyways, sorry, didn't mean to go on a tangent there. You said um, you weren't okay. <laughs> gonna go on a tangent. I did. All right. Talk um, about fucking skull and bones. I want to hear about it so bad. I want, I I'm rooting for skull and bones. Okay. <laughs> because I'm, I'm in the mood for a pirate game. I'm in the mood for a ship combat game. And Honestly, when I heard that it's coming from Ubisoft, Singapore is kind of the one leading the initiative, although there's a bunch of studios involved. I'm like, hell yeah, let's get some different voices in here, not just Europe and North America. And I'm like, yeah, this looks this looks really cool. I never played Black Flag, but I was always off to the side being Don't like, that. that looks cool. Go play Black Flag instead. So so here's the thing. Skull and Bones, they had an open beta last week, so you could hop in for free play the game your progression would go over play it for free at, tomorrow oh really they're doing open beta after the release i think it's literally just for friday maybe it's saturday oh, okay okay it's like one day it's like one day you can play it for free yeah and i was prepared i was like if i like this game i'm gonna buy it right i'm i'm gonna buy it or i'm gonna do ubisoft play plus for like 15 bucks for the month and do that mm -hmm. um i play this game for an hour and i never pledged it again it's bad it's really really bad 
Um, it, it's it's very funny it had because to be. it had to be. It didn't have to be. And let me tell you why. Because we 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 had a news article last week that we didn't run, which was uh, Eve from Ubisoft saying this is this is a quadruple A game. And a lot of people were shitting on them for that. And I was like, I understand what he means. And playing this game and seeing the intro the, in the intro credits for this game, when they drop the title card, they go through. They start with Ubisoft Singapore and then they go through like 10 other studios that are involved in this. And they're all Ubisoft studios. And I'm like, they put a lot of fucking time and money into this game. Like, I understand what he means by triple A, triple A. I mean, quadruple A, quadruple A is Grand Theft Auto. It's Marvel Spider-Man. Like yeah. there are games bigger than triple A and they're trying to do this. They put enough money and time into it to make this. But when it comes down to how the game feels. There's so many fucking animations and transitions and like animations and like voice acting that it's 90 percent of the fucking game. It's it's like, you know, you're you're you you go to your ship, right? And you go hop in the ship and it's like, OK, we're going to play this 15 second animation. You're going to hop in your ship and then we're going to swing it around. And then you go to move the ship and it's like, we're going to do a little animation. OK, we're going to go swing over here. Oh, we're going to do a little animation. We're going to go to this thing and like try and, you know, grab this thing. OK, we're going to slow down animation. OK, interact with it. OK, now we're going to teleport you from the ship to inside. It's like they forgot to make the fucking gameplay, right? Like they were so focused on oh, Todd Howard special. We got to put the fun in. Yeah, but, but but at least his has gameplay. This is more like yeah. we're going to put 90 percent of our effort into the polish. The game has to look good. It has to it has to look and feel like a quadruple A game, right? It has to have so much polish. Everything's got to be voice acted. We got to have all these crazy cinematics and everything. But at the end of the day, when you are finally controlling the ship or controlling your character, it feels so fucking bland. The ship combat feels bland, moving, interacting. It feels bland. All the menus feel bland slash confusing like like getting to like a, a merchant the first time you're like okay what can i build where's this tree show me the level 10 cannon so i know what i'm going towards bland 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 it's a fucking treadmill they put you in a shitty boat at the start and they're like go over here pick up supplies go over here to get kill this guy at xp come back that'll give you enough to craft your first cannon etc etc and it's just like every single fucking mechanic in this game feels bland to bad and, mm -hmm. and i'm like and and they give you fucking nothing at the start so they just put you at the start of a treadmill and it feels terrible to run down that treadmill and it's like why the fuck am i playing this game <laughs> and it's super fucking disappointing because i can tell they how much fucking effort they put in you roller skates yeah it's just and roller skates would be more fun than this it's just fucking it's just like at least i don't I'm even around breaking my ankles yeah, and it's it's upsetting because this is it's literally just poor fucking design decisions all the way down. They had so much time and money to make this good. And so that's much. kind of why that's kind of why I believed in it, because they kept delaying it. They kept reworking it. And Ubisoft came out a couple times. If you remember, like two years ago, they had that thing where they're like, hey, we're delaying all of our games by at least six months because we need to rework our games to be more fun. This was right before Far Cry 6 came out. And they're like, we're pausing it. We're delaying it. We need to go back to the drawing board and, and make our games more fun. We realize we have problems with our games. I'm like, great. Right. They're showing initiative. They know there's a problem here. End of the fucking day. They took all the time, they took all that money, they put all that effort into it, and they still made the wrong fucking design decisions at every possible <laughs> step. And I know a lot of people shit on Skull and Bones, and I get that. That's Skull fun bones? to do. But for me, this was one of those games that the core of it, you're in a ship, you're a pirate, and it's just kind of like RuneScape. It's just like, hey, chill out, grind, get a cooler ship, get cooler guns, do just cooler like stuff. Just like I'm like, I'm like, fuck yeah. I'm okay with that. That core premise is there. Take your time, make it right. And I gave them as much fucking credit as I could all the way up until the minute I fucking played it. And it's terrible, folks. Is, is that is the TV show still coming out? The Skull and Bones TV show? I, I hope so. I don't know. I, 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 need, I need that lore. I want uh, it to come out after the, sh the servers are shut down. Um, do you think, Ian, that the game could have been good eventually if they weren't required to release it by the Singapore government. No, because they blew through that deadline. Remember the last time the story came out was like a year and a half ago yeah. and the deadline was before now. So they, at the end of the day, they said they fucked off that deadline anyways. But this deadline was legitimate. Like they will be sued yeah. if they don't do it. 
Yeah, because it was partially funded by the government and they needed yeah. them to release it by a certain date. I don't think so. And let me tell you why. Because I don't think the government was making the bad design decisions. I think the government <laughs> pressure may have put the wrong people in charge who made the bad design uh, decisions. I like that point. As in, as in, but that at the end of the day, that's that's normal fucking investment pressure. That's normal fucking publisher pressure. Sure. And there's a million fucko games in the same fucking position that make the correct design decisions. Fucked. Speaking but, of games that make correct design decisions. And speaking of treadmills, the complete fucking opposite of the treadmill, Helldivers 2, the PlayStation uh, PS5 PC game that came out last Thursday, I believe. Uh, turns out it's fucking fantastic. Um, real quick, this game, uh, if you remember Helldivers 1, which was basically a top down twin stick shooter, you're shooting bugs. It turns out Helldivers 1 is exactly the same as Helldivers 2. I never yeah. played it, but you basically like you spawn in. It's drop and drop out co-op. You're on a map. You have a time limit. There's a main objective. There's side objectives you can do. The big thing is you have these stratagems, which are basically like uh, superpowers that you can call down, like orbital barrage, machine gun sentries, things like that. Um, and then you're just kind of uh, I don't want to call it grinding, but you're leveling up and you're unlocking more stuff and having more fun. And it's just kind of chaotic, good fun. Helldivers, if, if Skull and Bones is a treadmill, Helldivers 2 feels like a goodwill or, you know, a, a, a Salvation Army store. And what I mean by that is you go into it and there's so much Not weird comparable shit. things, even a, even a little bit. But go ahead. You go into it and you're like, there's so much weird shit here. And it's all so cheap that I want to try all of it. I want to I want to like, let's go look at the stack of VCRs. Let's go look at the weird blazers they have in the back. Check out this pair of roller skates. Right. And that's what it feels like with Helldivers, too, because they give you access to so much stuff off the bat. And it's so cheap to get more stuff that you're just like, yeah, give me a napalm strike. Give me a backpack drone gun. Give me like uh, give me a fucking grenade launcher. You know, give me this 500 kilo bomb, you know, that I can just call in. It, yeah. And it instead, it, it, if it was Skull and Bones, if it was pretty much any other fucking AAA game, the grind in that game would be 10 times worse. Mm -hmm. And 90 percent of that shit would be 10 hours in. But they're literally just like, here's all the shit. Most of it's on like a minute cooldown, minute or two minute cooldown. So just constantly fucking call it in. Who cares if you die because you go to the mission with 20 respawns like right off the bat. And even if you fail a mission and don't extract or whatever, you're still going to get some currency, which is still going to let you buy something new. So it's that's what I mean. By like, it's a goodwill. They're just like, here, have have fun with it. You know, it's fucking great. Will, are you loving the game? I hate it. It's actually awful. Uh, and I'm switching <laughs> to Skull and Bones. Can't wait to play it. Uh, no, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's a fantastic video game. It nails. Uh, I'd be the... totally down to do like a couple streams, of bad boy. If you boys want to, oh, you should play with us. Bugs. We've been playing a bunch. Uh, I, the, I, this is the most uh, video game, probably outside of Lethal Company, that I have played. Just like I'll see Jake's on, and I'll message him, or he didn't message me today because he was on his lunch break, and I messaged Ian today. It's it's one of those games, I don't mind matchmaking, but I'd very much rather play with people who yeah. are going to play. So I, I, I might, will say, just to cut in there, I'm normally the type of person that I will never fucking play with randoms, but I've been playing more of this game with randoms because the game is so relaxed that, like I said, like, even if you die, you just respawn. If you drop a bad uh, orbital barge, uh, orbital, you know, artillery barrage, you'll get another one in a minute. If you fail the mission, so what? You'll still get some XP. So it's and then the other thing is they have a good ping system and you kind of know where you're going. You can communicate without communicating. So it's it's super easy to just drop in. And because of that, I've been playing most of it like that, because a lot of times it's easier for me. It's like 8 a.m. I've got a little bit of time before work. I'm like, let me just quick play. I, I know Will's yeah. not up. People aren't up. I'm not going to try and like match make. I'm not going to fucking solo it because it's hard on solo. So I'll just quick play and it works really well. Yeah, it feels good too. the like calling in the stratagems, which are like your little side things like orbital strikes and packages. You like hold control and you type in the sequence to throw the grenade to bring the thing down. Um, everyone's yeah. ships line up together in the group. Um, I like destiny. Fuck yeah! Yeah, you you fly over to the place like literally you fly you're flying around the planet and it's the same spot on the little globe you're looking at on the planet. Uh, supposedly, all the other ships in the background are other players launching down, and you can see them. You can join games. 
the unlocks like Ian said are really fun uh and neat and and you get like i have i haven't spent any of it but i have so much uh like paid for currency just because you can buy it with the in-game money um so i find it or in find the mission, it yeah you can find you the can paid find currency it. uh it, it's just it's good it's a well-made game it's it's someone who said who stuck by like we're not we're we're gonna like we're against microtransactions in the sense of you should be able to either pay for it or the same amount of pretty much effort if you don't have money and this seems like that perfect balance of like yeah, yeah someone could buy all the the stuff but they don't have to um you can you can really work for it and the drop in drop out's great uh and yeah it's it's it yeah. feels really good also, it, it, the marketing I, for this has been incredible. It's been it's been yeah. so fun. They're just yeah. leaning into the Starship Trooper shit super hard. But like, great. That that's what you should be doing. Yeah, yeah. This is a game where you shoot bugs and robots in space. Yeah, it feels like one of those games where talking about Starship Troopers, they totally nail the aesthetic, the vibe, the look, etc. But the thing they really take that into is the gameplay. Like, there's a lot of games that look how they're supposed to look or they look great. But at the end of the day, the gameplay is kind of generic, but it feels like with hell divers too, with a lot of the decisions they made, they, they took their aesthetic as inspiration. So, um, you know, for example, friendly fire, it's just pure fucking chaos. There's shit dropping everywhere. And it's like, Oh, my turret just took me, took me out because I stepped in front of it or an enemy popped up behind me, you know, or my friend accidentally dropped, you know, he was about to throw an orbital barrage grenade and then he died. So his grenade dropped right next to us. And it's just like leaning into the chaos and allowing that and almost encouraging it in a way because it fits the aesthetic. It fits the landing on Clendathu from Starship Troopers when shit is just popping off constantly. Um, it, and, and the other cool thing is, I didn't know this was in the original, but there's also a robot faction. So that it's a two front yeah. war. And uh, the funny thing is the first mission, I think this was the first mission we all did together against robots was also our first time against robots, any of us. And we accidentally dropped into Malvalon Creek at night and we got fucking wiped by the robots oh yeah and then the next day i go on twitter is either twitter or TikTok, TikTok, and somebody and i found out the community is calling it space vietnam and it's like yeah that's what it is it's fucking space vietnam oh, like it's God. just like dark jungle red glowing eyes coming out from everywhere and it's just constant like tracer fire and it's just it's it's leaning into all these box office moments because that fits the aesthetic they could have made a generic ass shooter they really could have but they made a lot of very unique design decisions specifically because it fit the aesthetic they were going for and that's it's incredible game design so fuck skull and don't skull and bones play and domes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my call, that my call that tuesday nights baby some skull and some dome <laughs> oh yeah campfire nights um, also uh, uh excited in chat for hell yeah i give the, the i'm doing I'm my, part. my part um did you guys see uh their surprise announcement today their big announcement who's big announcement Not the uh hell divers too what the the emergency broadcast yeah the the we're being invaded <laughs> yay <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. They, tweet, they tweeted it like i don't know like noon today it's like big announcement incoming ellipses and then later it was like it's an invasion Woo! just yeah the it's effort awesome. for them to put out like a 30 second like update on the front like we're moving yeah. away from operation whatever to fight the robots now and it's just like like leaning into the aesthetic to that point is so good yeah. and it, it yeah it's not even in the game and it makes me want to play the game more like that's that's a great great way to engage your community and i think they're doing a great job of that uh yep. divers too it's good and like uh, the, whoever runs their twitter is just reposting all of like the montages of like guys running through a rev fire with like Freebird playing in the background <laughs> yeah they they do this one they do this one really fucking cool thing which i i started hearing like these moments where your character's yelling like woo freedom or like yeah get some and i was like that's kind of cool it happens at random but then i realized and will i don't know if you picked up on this either it happens when you just lay down the fucking 
fire like if you're on the machine gun and you're firing continuously for more than 10 seconds your character will do a bark and just be like yeah fucking freedom and it's incredible that it's like it's like they've programmed it so it fits the moment they know shit's popping off Ugh. and they're having your character yell and you're just they like, literally yes. leaned, leaned into the team america freedom fuck yeah aesthetic. yeah it's I, it's so good i should play some after this stream or we, I'll do it. i will i'll buy it right now motherfucker <laughs> We we were playing an hour before the stream, and we, we had to stop so that I could eat dinner before the <laughs> podcast. Uh, Chris, you should totally get it. I will play with you. Um, yeah, I uh, I also <laughs> it, one of the funniest things happened to me, which I don't know if it's programmed, but it, or like for this, but um, I was walking, and one of those pods just landed next to me, and it was close enough where my character went, oh, like like oh, oh fuck. yeah, <laughs> like that's programmed. Yeah, that's got to be programmed. Like, I mean, yeah, but it's just like it, it came off as so natural that I was like, you must have to yeah. be very close for it to trigger that. Uh, yeah. And uh, oh, one funny. more thing, one more thing. I I saw this in a TikTok, and I knew it could happen. I and then TikTok I, all of a sudden, and then I did it, and I was like, that's so fucking cool. Uh, there was a teammate. Uh, we were trying to take out a building, so I threw like a napalm strike at the building and then we started running away from it. And I was looking at the building and my teammate was like 10 feet closer than me to the building. And when the napalm strike hit, the concussive <laughs> blast from the explosion literally pushed his character like 10 feet oh, back. Geez. And I was oh. like, that's like it didn't that's ragdoll. Awesome, they just literally man. like shoved him back. And I was like, that's fucking awesome. Lo launching the icbms and saluting and then it blows up on the horizon and the big gust of uh the, the wind comes wave. by yes. the shockwave comes by you're just like fuck <laughs> yeah like they went so hard on this game in a lot of aspects that they did not have to but everybody really it, really appreciates i'd like want to know the lore now like why like what what are the what, you, what do the bugs do what do the robots do like like what's happening yeah. like i mean super earth's in the right obviously, so obviously. Like, what jake, are, jake should write a pro like a, like a pro bono whatever the fuck uh on on spec uh novel for them that just like basically rips off every other sci-fi genre's like <laughs> tropes and like yeah. jams all of them into the background factions Oh, it's like it, the bugs traveled back in time to kill my son. <laughs> but John, the robots no, not not involved. Man. Yeah. Uh that'd be crazy. Um yeah, that's um that's that's Helldivers 2. Fantastic game. Go play it. It's only forty dollars. Uh it's great. It might still be on sale places, but yeah, forty it's bucks not. for this game. It's currently it's... installing on my computer. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, hell divers speaking of hell diving it's time to hell dive into the xbox news this week ian gibson the news curator of local chat i don't know if yeah. people know that curates the news here tell me Ooh. all about the news you have curated yeah so let me give the quick background i'll run through all the different little updates we got and then i'll get you guys take so basically rumors started coming in hot and heavy hotter than usual last week that xbox was going to uh on 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 the calm end release some of their xbox exclusive titles on other platforms like switch and playstation and on the extreme end xbox is leaving the hardware business and they're gonna shut down your xbox starting this week and it was people losing what? their fucking mind so then um there was they a, felt like a minute where xboxes were like 150 bucks like on like facebook yeah. Marketplace and shit and i'm sure most people got them and i'm like you fucking <laughs> <laughs> so ah. um microsoft basically i mean threw together a business update this week which was just a podcast i think is what they call it the official <laughs> xbox podcast that well-known yeah. thing <laughs> yeah so anyways um they also gave some interviews because there was some uh interviews and, and uh quotes that dropped at the same time as the as the podcast but basically uh, i'll go through some of the quotes here every screen is an xbox uh they're planning <laughs> to bring four yeah. of their games to <laughs> other consoles uh, there's a very good quote here from Matt Booty. Today, big games like a Roblox or a Fortnite can actually be bigger than any one platform, and that really has changed the way we think about things. Uh, the other thing they talked about was next-gen Xbox. They're currently working on hardware to be d announced this year, as well as next-gen Xbox, which is, quote, the largest technical leap ever. Uh, game Pass has 34 million fully paid subscribers now, and they're, they're kind of talking about how, hey, console exclusivity is not the way forward for the future 
And this is basically a way for them to to test that out with four previously exclusive titles. Uh, the rumors here, again, rumors, rumors, rumors. But the rumor is that I believe it's uh, Sea of Thieves, Pentiment. I can't remember the other two. They're not confirmed anyways, but th those are the rumors. But he did clearly say that it will not be Starfield or Indiana Jones. Um, so we finally have some answers from Xbox regarding all these rumors. If, what, if what are that's your thoughts? the four, like if that's two of the four, not like no shade to the, both again, both very good games, like kind of a big letdown, right? I mean, oh, sorry. Hi-Fi Rush, Pentiment, Sea of Thieves, Grounded. I, I think it makes sense. They're games with appeal, yeah. but they're also not risky. You're not Hi-Fi Rush like, I think I, is a perfect test of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's one of those great. things where Sea of Thieves, it's 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 low risk because you're not going to lose Xbox sales, whereas Starfield yeah. is still hot, still popular, even though it's trash. You will lose sales. So I think this is perfect for test games, basically. Is it? But like, is it still moving a lot of copies? I hear nothing about Starfield in the game space. I like no, I, not I even like I don't hear I don't hear like hey I just like people don't talk about it. What about normies? Like there's normies who only play Fallout and Elder Scrolls, so right? My a, a couple of my coworkers bought Starfield on release, and like you know they are very much normies. They don't play a lot of games. Like they played like the last game they played for Starfield was probably like Red Dead Two. Um, yeah, and then like they talked about Starfield for I'm gonna say five days, and then just never came up again. Yeah, I mean I could see there's probably still people out there who don't have an Xbox yet, but are like I'm saving up for my Xbox. I want an Xbox for my birthday. I want an Xbox for Christmas so that I yeah, can play. That's true. Starfield. Starfield. Yeah. Yeah. I guess until it's been a full cycle of all the major holidays since Starfield, it'll, it'll be like that. Yeah. So so we talked about this last week, but Chris, what are your thoughts on Microsoft trying to move away from console exclusivity and more towards multi platforms? I think it's really interesting. I mean, I in general think that like we'll talk about later with the Sony, you know, thinking that PS5 is in, in its latter cycle of life. Um Cons this console cycle and kind of the last one to do a lot of people's metric been pretty shit um as far as like things coming out yeah. and being playable and you know i used standing in line for fucking playstation 5s attempting 69 times to get a playstation 5 before it finally occurred um I, I like i like the idea of it a lot i like the idea of xbox like getting more into the we're, we're just a dev space where microsoft yeah. we can make a bajillion dollars very easily um the thing that i don't fully like i i don't think i i just don't think they will ever be able to actually do that because uh, i think like from an investor standpoint and from like a board standpoint you you just spent so much money acquiring the exclusivity to a lot of these things so that sony couldn't have them you know, what do you mean you want to get out of the hardware space like it, like not for this thing obviously the, the series x and yeah. i'm sure whatever's coming after it are both like a lock but then um after that i could see them trying to shy away from it and being like no you you we can't do that the, the company has to commit to this um, yeah but but i think for me it's console console exclusivity the end of console exclusivity does not mean the end of hardware and the reason why i say that is you're, you're totally right this generation has kind of sucked but between the series x and the playstation 5 i turned my series x on at least once once or twice a month at minimum to play a game play this play that my playstation 5 i turn on once every six months maybe okay and it's the, you're wild <laughs> it's this but here's the thing it, uh, for a majority of it it's the same fucking games on both of them and it yeah, really just yeah. comes down to which service is it on and you know which place can i get it cheaper yeah. and a majority of the time it's game pass Right. Yeah. Or it's I can buy it for Xbox and also play it on my PC or even yeah. also play it on my Xbox one in the bedroom. And it's like that's the thing is that hardware doesn't mean you have to have the best exclusives anymore. You just have to have the best hardware UI UX experience. And Xbox is fucking killing it on that front because the PS5 is like an OK machine. And the thing that's keeping it alive are the exclusives, whereas for Microsoft, the exclusives are the only bad thing about the Xbox Series X. Other than that, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's crazy. They flipped I, it. I I think if like if they're gonna downsize what to do with hardware, just start selling me sell me the stupid Steam box, the Val the the legendary Valve console idea. Like just give me a yeah. very powerful brick that doesn't have it doesn't have a disk drive. It doesn't have this. Doesn't have that. It doesn't even need to look that cool. I don't fucking care. But it can play video games from a place 
That's all I need it yeah. to do. But the crazy thing is, I, I they're not there yet. But if you think about what the Xbox does and how every single first party Xbox game now is Xbox Play Anywhere, which means yeah. you get a copy and it's an Xbox and a PC copy in one. They're much closer than anybody else is where it's just like, look, you get the game, you can play it on your TV, you can play it on the PC. It's coming out both day one, cross saves, etc. And there's a lot of third party games that support that out of the box as well. Um, and it's it's like uh, I, I didn't realize this. I may be mistaken because I haven't actually tried it, but I have I have uh, like a dragon infinite wealth installed on my PC through my Xbox app. I purchased it for the Xbox, not for my PC, but and it's not a it's not a Microsoft title, but apparently I get access to both on both sides and I yeah. and I can play it and cross it. I'm like, that's fucking a- wild. That's not a first party game point has that it, from from Microsoft by mandate yes but for yeah. third party it's not guaranteed no i'm saying like any thing. like m- most major releases though like it's it's uh i don't remember what game it was it was or, I don't like Helldivers divers 2 doesn't have that no 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 i mean it's yeah. um but like so that's that's the thing yeah is is you're totally right they 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 have a lot more to go but i think people are forgetting how fucking good they have made the xbox as a response to knowing they don't have exclusives it, they're not playing the game where they're like, our box is going to be shit until we get exclusives. They're making that box shit hot. And then eventually they'll get some exclusives for it. Fuck yeah, I went there. That's a I mean, shit I do, hot like, console. Like, like, just Game Pass alone makes me think having an Xbox <laughs> is worth it. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. plain and simple. I mean, the, especially the, since the, the Series S was like, they basically dropped the MSRP to 200 bucks last fall. Yeah. You can find that shit cheap anywhere. It's great. Those two, the well, the three Ninja Gaiden games are all on Game Pass. That's where I'm playing them. Like I didn't have yeah. to buy them, and and it's hilarious. I was like, oh, I should buy a copy of Black, uh, Ninja Gaiden Black, and Ninja Gaiden Two, and digitally they're both, I think thirty dollars for an Xbox 360 and an Jeez. Xbox original game. So it's like, thank God yeah. these are on Game Pass. Uh, it just it, it feels like you know PS5 is outperforming the Xbox. But it's because it's relying on the old console model of I need solid exclusives, right? And they're yeah. delivering. They're delivering on the exclusives. But Xbox, but but that makes you vulnerable, right? Because it just takes one or two bad years, like they said recently, where they We're said, hey, 2024 is, is not going to have any major Sony releases. And it's like, that's a bad fucking year for your console because your whole console is built on fucking exclusives. Yep. Whereas Game Pass has I, I mean xbox has built themselves to be a bit more future proof where they're like we don't even need to put out exclusives because we're giving you the best place we to play pretty much any fucking game and put on uh, uh game Pass. yeah we don't have to buy it we can buy the license to it and like it costs us a fucking song yeah. and we give you a, a split of the province if you will play our game which it yeah. might happen but even outside of Game Pass, it's 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 like I said, you know, uh, a better cross platform, better cross play, quick resume. It's just a better fucking console, period. And and then it comes down to it like I don't got Spider-Man. And that's it. I don't think that's I, all it is. Yeah. I, sorry. I'm just thinking I'm um, between PS5 and Xbox. Actually, even between like late PS4, Xbox One X beyond, if I ever face a decision where it's should I buy this game on PlayStation or Xbox? I have always gone Xbox because it's just a better console experience. Yeah. And Agreed. that's same. Yeah. And so when you in when the you, Xbox one, uh, one, one slash one X era, you were wild for that, but it paid off in the long run. No, one X was a one X was an incredible fucking console, though. It was late, no, it was but it was like, a very good console. Yeah, but like the PS4 at that point was like, like my I still it's sitting beneath me. My fucking launch PlayStation 4, the, the white uh, destiny one. Um, yeah. and like that thing, like had no problems with any game from launch to death. Like, yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's even fair. Ghost of Tsushima, which came out right when that thing was being put into the dirt and it ran yeah. like, you know, it made the fucking thing. Like, it's not like yeah. a jet. The, the original Xbox one was shit, but that one X was shit hot. It was good. It was good. <laughs> He's really pushing shit. <laughs> hot. Just, well, just remember, he tries his new catchphrases when- every week. <laughs> remember when red dead redemption 2 came out and the xbox one x was the only thing that could actually run it at 4k 30 like yeah. the ps4 yeah, pro yeah. couldn't even do that um that game was so, optimized like hot liquid butt though which was crazy that the one x could run it at 4k yeah 30 yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, that, that's, more, that's more of a praise of the one x than anything else yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the one x was shit um, hot, so 
it was shit hot so my point is my point is just all these people who are bitching about xbox and are upset about this they're stuck in the sony mindset they're stuck in the past whereas xbox is starting to make a gamble on what the marketplace will look like three five ten fifteen years from now and it's already paying off because they started that three five i years totally ago. get that i totally i see your point and i agree with you however at the end of the day 95 99.5% of gamers don't give a fuck about your five-year business plan. Where are my yeah. games? Give me my games now is all they care about. And yeah. honestly, yeah. it's a consumer space. It's an entertainment consumer space. That's not only to be expected, but like kind of their right. Like we yeah, are told fair. constantly to vote with your dollar. And if like, if there's no game for me to play now, why me care? But also, yeah, like, yeah. think I, about all the people. Sorry, Ian, but think about all the gamers and people who just play Madden every year and who just buy and play Call of Duty every year. Like, yeah, there are people yeah. who those are the only video games they play during the year, which is like and they're like, also the ones. It, like, they they don't realize that that's what that's not what video games. Video games aren't a yearly update, and they're yeah, they yeah, think yeah. that. But, but they're they're locked into two things, right? Two external factors. The number one is what consoles their friends have crossplay is is reducing that day by day but there are yeah. still some games yeah, no, that are platform it, limited yeah, 100%. yeah and and the other big one uh brad shoemaker pointed this out on the next lander podcast and it surprised me because it's a very solid point which is ps3 xbox 360 era i'm sorry yeah kind of 360 era but more importantly the xbox one ps4 era was the start of digital library so if you chose the ps4 you have a digital library. You want to carry that forward. You're not locked into the PS5, but it would be stupid of you to switch platforms if you're not planning on getting both because you're saying goodbye yeah. to all your PS4 digital games. But and games because the Xbox One mitigates this. Yeah, yeah. But Xbox One was so weak that most people didn't choose it, so they didn't start their digital library. Then. But it's I, like but iPhone and Android. Having like the Series you're, X you're as an in. option brings you back more though like yes like i can yeah. buy the cheaper console play games pass i'm not locking myself into super hard investment and like and yeah. then you play games pass for two years and xbox is like you know we did it boys champagne yeah. for everyone <laughs> that's why I'll, I'll i'll say it for you chris because i think you'll appreciate it and i i stand the fuck by it console wars nowadays are for people who are stupid or poor because when you think about it to take the worst part is, is like a, I 100% agree. <laughs> yeah, to buy to buy a PS5 and an Xbox Series X costs a thousand dollars once every seven years. If you can't save up that kind of money to partake in a generation, oh, then cool. then you know, hey, you're probably in a bad financial situation and you need to take care of other things, or you're just an idiot, right? Like it it does not take that much to I think I did the calculation the other day. It's like ten dollars a month you would have to save up to get to a thousand dollars over seven years. Did you see it's the, the blessing I people. want a tweet about um buying uh a, a console when you're saving up for the next switch? Mm -mm. And it was like if you started saving for a switch two the first time Elite came out, you can buy three Xboxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's just like it's so stupid. You don't have to choose any more people. You just buy both of them. If you're a gamer, buy both of them. You idiots. There's enough difference. By all of us, be rich. You I hate scum. to agree, but I do. Yeah, you bastards. Uh, uh, next news story. Um, IGN is bringing back E3. That's that's the hot and heavy uh, kind of inappropriate, inaccurate headline. But basically, yeah. IGN has announced they're going to host IGN Live, an in-person fan event in L.A. this June. They basically said, hey, we hated how E3 wasn't really for the fans. And even when it was, it was kind of hard to get involved in. And we're doing IGN Live, which is a fan focused game celebration in June in L.A., a.k.a. E3 time frame. How, how do you guys feel about this? I mean, I'm 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 thrilled that they're trying something that they want because like the the biggest downfall of Summer Games Fest is like it's kind of a panel show and nothing else. Whereas E3 was more yeah. than a panel. Sorry, it was a show that had other panels, but like you know it had like interactions with other people in the gaming space. You would see YouTubers go all the fucking time, um, and like you know vlog and like do you know, recordings and podcasts and shit. And that that's cool. And we definitely lose that with Summer Games Fest being the way that it is. Not that I actually, I mean, I like the the, cons the consolidated nature of it. Um, I don't have high hopes that this will succeed super well. I think it could. I think it totally could. Um, 
I, I like honestly, I and ironically, I, I hope it works. I, I hope it succeeds. I just I don't know if that it necessarily will. Yeah, yeah. They need to go for a small venue and book it the fuck out. Yeah, and then yeah. next year re- reassess. Yeah. Honestly, I was thinking about this. Uh, just, uh, I mean, Pop Reed tried to do E3, but at the end of the day, they just need to do PAX LA in June and and lean into it. That's what it needs to be. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is also competing with the PAX space, and PAX is, you know, big. It's yeah. just, it, but it's good... also, like, weird when, I, and this might sound hype, I, I don't know, but it's weird when in one journalistic or thing hosts an event for the the thing it covers for like the uh, the basic business it covers because it kind of just like blocks out other journalists from going you know like uh-huh. like all the exclusive would go to IGN obviously because it's it's hosted by them it's just like it like if they're trying to do the full E3 thing it's like not quite the same thing um but i don't know it's it's yeah. cool that they're trying to do something. I I think. Yeah, it's it's definitely a vacuum in the space, and I really would love somebody to come in because honestly, E three gets E three gets a lot of shit, and I'm just gonna fucking say it. I think it's from journalists who were tired of feeling obligated that they had to go every year, because at the end of the day, as somebody who who likes the industry, who follows the news closely, E three was like the fucking Super Bowl and the Oscars yes, all rolled yes. into one, right? It was just like fucking video games but you, do you guys remember when g4 tv had that commercial for e3 and they like sang the song yeah like, that's yeah, what yeah, it yeah, felt yeah. like it was, it's that's what it felt like and we need that shit they're still trying to do that shit even though we haven't had e3 for three years there's still press conferences around then etc and it's like just fucking bring it back somebody's got it i love stuff like that it. uh austin created xavier was like the wrestler slash gaming personality did a thing where he talked about like how WrestleMania week for wrestling fans, like Super Bowl, it's like your thing is mainstream for one week yep. and everyone's talking about it. E3 is the exact same thing where it's like for one week, everyone's like talking and excited about the game space. And like people who don't normally talk about it would be talking about it because it was like a week. It was big. There was a thing every day, like, like you know, Xbox at a press conference or Sony did or whatever the fuck. That's yeah. the thing I missed the most by far from that is that like you had to show the fuck up and you had to have something. And often you got like the Konami press conference that everyone loves. Um, and sometimes <laughs> you got bangers. The yeah. XXX and the YYY. You will be and sucked. Men, and men slapping <laughs> each other on screen. On screen. <laughs> it's such yeah. a good moment. <laughs> Um, that press conference <laughs> rules we should remake it oh it's it's uh, you will be sucked it's so funny because i know what he means he's saying yeah. you will be bad but it got so mistranslated that he just says you will be sucked and the whole room just goes oh Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Sure. And like, also, he's dre- it's Hawk Fuji. He's dressed the way he is. He looks the yeah. way he does. Oh like he's God. just a crazed man up there. Like you'll be sucked. What do you? Uh, what do you want from me? <laughs> yeah, it's Jeez a video game. Louise. Um, I hate this late breaking news here, but I was uh, merely looking up, and there's a gigantic spider on the wall. I could tell. I I was like, what is on his fucking ceiling? And or what is Karen huge. trying to like show him? We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta get out of here, please. Oh, we gotta go. It's I falling. Take, oh, we I gotta, gotta take go. a picture of it. Um, oh, any more news? Let's end it. No, it's just just a lot of uh, small stuff, but uh, none of it worth calling out. We do have a wishlist spotlight. This week's wishlist spotlight is Hole Punch by Just Cam H, and unfortunately, Hio is down, so we Ooh. can't talk not about it. it. Not, for me, not. not for me. It ain't. Oh, yeah. it just loaded. Um, so oh, this game looks hot. I have been playing this game, Hole Punch. It's not necessarily wishlist spotlight. It's out. Go, go. You can. Buy it, name your own price on itch.io, toss my few dollars. I played this a bunch during a phone call that I was, uh, I was just, it's just boring. Uh, I mean, this game's just, uh, cool enough that you can just do it while doing other things like RuneScape. Uh, you are literally punching your character through the environment to cause the environment collapse around and kill, uh, people who are in the environment. It's side, it's a side, look up a picture of it, you lazy fuck. Um, there are snipers and all people shooting at you and you got to dodge them and you got to collect these gems and you're breaking into a bank and it's really neat. 
Uh, I had an absolute blast with it. Go check it out. Hole Punch. I'll have the link in the description. Uh, give them a couple bucks. It is also on Steam, so you can wishlist it on Steam. I see an external link down here, so go wishlist it. It's very fun, and it, I played for about an hour, and I did not, like, I, there were still levels going. So uh, definitely go check it out. Hole Punch. It's a great name, too. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It and when you yeah. see it in action, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You'll get your hole punched, baby. Um, if there's holes. They're being punched. If there's holes, it's you getting punched. Sucking. There is. You will be sucked. Um, folks, let's get the frick out of here before the spider eats me and my children. Uh, you can find us all on subpixelfilms.com. That'll bring you straight to our link tree. We can go to all cool places. Uh, you can find Chris over at Save Data. Uh, they do streams where they strip naked and paint each other with peanut butter. It's very weird, but apparently that's what Ace Attorney fans love. Uh, you can find me, Will Crosby, on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find Ian on Twitter at Think Gibson. You can find Chris on Twitter at Save Data Chris. Uh, we will be back this weekend with Excel Champ, Ian's incredible new Excel show. Uh, I'm very excited for that. He's going to have a blast uh, making making money. Yeah! Uh, I'll be back uh, next week with Fired Emblem, and we got some uh, stuff cooking up in the behind the scenes that I've been working on, so t stay tuned for that. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.